Good day and thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Ferrari 2024 Q1 results conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star 1 1 on your telephone. You will then hear an automated message advising your hand is raised. To withdraw your question, please press star 1 and 1 again. Please be advised that today's conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to your speaker today, Nicoletta Russo, Head of Investor Relations. Please go ahead. Thank you, Sandra, and welcome to everyone who is joining us. Today we plan to cover the Group Q1 2024 operating results and the duration of the call is expected to be around 60 minutes. Today's call will be hosted by the Group CEO, Mr. Benedetto Vigna, and Group CFO, Mr. Antonio Picca Piccon. All relevant materials are available in the investor section of the Ferrari Corporate website, and at the end of the presentation, we will be available to answer your questions. Before we begin, let me remind you that any forward-looking statements we might make during today's call are subject to the risks and uncertainties mentioned in the safe harbor statement included on page two of today's presentation, and the call will be governed by this language. With that said, I'd like to turn the call over to Benedetto. Grazie, Nicoletta, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I just came back from Miami, where I spent uh, one week together with uh, our clients, the fans, the sponsors, including HP, our new title sponsor, and all brand enthusiasts. You should have been there with me and all Ferrari colleagues. You would have been experiencing the brand power of the prancing horse. Indeed, for the first time in our history, the so our company, racing, sport cars, and lifestyles have been working in unison together to provide all the people in Miami a truly unique experience. But before sharing with you more detail about this fantastic event, I would like to thank our Ferrari colleagues for their outstanding work and dedication, our clients for their loyalty to our brand, and all our partners, suppliers, dealers, and sponsors. Without their tireless effort and dedication, the strong results we present today would not have been possible. So let's start with the financial result of the first quarter. We can say that it is a strong start to the year, with double-digit growth on key metrics, thanks to an even more robust product mix and a strong trend in personalization. Three are the key highlights. One, total revenues reached approximately 1.6 billion euro with flat deliveries. This, once again, pays testament to our strategy of value over volume. Two, we enjoyed a strong profitability with EBDA at 605 million euro. And three, industrial free cash flow generation reached more than 320 million euro in the quarter. The order book on our current models continues to be very strong with a normalization in line with our expectation, with almost all models substantially sold out. And in the last week, we opened the order book for the Dodici Cilindri, Coop, and Spider. For the first time for our range models, we unveiled the Coop and the Spider together because we want to leave the freedom of selection to our clients. The first feedback from our two new models has been extremely positive. Several clients have said, it's not a matter of either or, we love both. I talked with a client from all over the world, from China, from Korea, from US, from Europe. They were all astonished by both models. Our new Dodici Cilindri are amazingly beautiful and high performance. They are the perfect blend of tradition and innovation, elegance and sportiness. Our client's opinion are obviously paramount, but I am also proud to say that the Roma Spiders has been recognized with a Rod Dot Award best of the best in the product design category. And the Ferrari SF90 XX Stradale and one-off KC23 have also been awarded Red Dot Awards. All these are truly innovative vehicles enabled by our R&D innovation. And in fact, in 2023, just in Italy, we submitted 181 patent applications, one every two days. 
And always on the subject of innovation, last month we inaugurated the eCell Lab in collaboration with the University of Bologna and NXP Semiconductors. This laboratory will make a significant contribution to research in electrochemistry, and the project reflects the importance of collaboration between the academic and the business worlds. But there is much more in it. This lab will foster innovation in our local area and help us to build the, skill, the skills of the future. Talking of technology collaboration, we have renewed our partnership with SKION, a leader in the field of high-performance cell manufacturing with whom we have collaborated for many years, and we will continue to innovate further. As you can see, we are firing on all cylinders in the execution of our business plan and product development. But perhaps I should instead say we are charging ahead because in 2024, we will set another significant milestone in our electrification journey. In fact, on the 21st of June, exactly two years since our last Capital Market Day, and as we promised you during all our previous calls and meetings, we will inaugurate our new e-building. This state-of-the-art and highly flexible plan will assure us of the flexibility and technical capacity in excess of our needs for years to come. Here, we will handcraft the dedicated electric axles and the batteries that will power future Ferraris, exactly like we promised you two years ago. A special thank goes to all the colleagues that have been able to maintain the building schedule despite all the difficulties we experienced in these turbulent times. It has not been easy, believe me, but they made it happen. Grazie. Moving to the next page, the picture shows clearly the essence of one Ferrari ethos. And believe me, there is no better way to exemplify it than our recent activities in the United States. As I told you, at the beginning, last week Ferrari hosted an unforgettable series of brand experiences in Miami, which immersed international clients, sponsors, tifosi, dealers, and the brand enthusiasts into the Ferrari universe. It began with Cavalcade International, one of our most prestigious driving events, which attracted about 70 Ferraris and their owners from all over the world as they drove together through the scenic landscape of Nashville in Tennessee first and later in Florida. The journey culminated in Miami with the world premiere of the Ferrari 12 Cilindri and the Ferrari 12 Cilindri Spider. Our new two-seater Berlinettas powered by front mid naturally aspirated V12. These models are the perfect embodiment of the prancing horse DNA, offering incomparable performance and handling with sophisticated design. You should have seen the emotion of all our clients. My words would never be capable to transmit to you those emotions. These events were accompanied by a privileged view of the latest fashion capsule collection inspired by the history of racing on American tracks and the vibrant energy of Miami. The capsule collection had a warm reception. It was nice to see most of our clients wearing many pieces of our lifestyle collections during the long weekend. And last but not least, a fortunate few clients had the opportunity to leave the Miami Grand Prix to its fullest with exclusive and elegant hospitality of Casa Ferrari right at the heart of the race. I am also proud to say that the Miami Grand Prix was the start of a new partnership. HP has become our title sponsor with a multi-year collaboration that encompasses a shared commitment to innovation trust and excellence, as well as commitment to a sustainable future, from carbon neutrality to the education of the next generation. In HP, we have found the same values which make it an ideal partner. I know them since more than 20 years, and for both our companies, people are the center of whatever we do, because it is only people. It is only people who are able to blend together the tradition and innovation. Not all of our clients, Tifosi and brand enthusiasts, were able to attend the event in person. Thus, we reached them through social media channels to nurture their sense of belonging. Lastly, before moving on, I would like to thank you, our shareholders, for your continuing trust. And among you, I'm delighted to welcome 
around 4,700 new shareholders among our dear colleagues. Indeed, around 98% of our employees have taken advantage of the broad-based share ownership plan launched by Ferrari that I described to you a few calls ago. This initiative demonstrates our desire to foster the sense of belonging that makes us unique and underlines once more how we continuously strive for excellence. And on this note, I hand over to Antonio to review the Q1 2024 financial result. Please, Antonio. Thank you, Benedetto. And good morning or afternoon to everyone joining us today. Starting on page five, we present the highlights of the first quarter results of this year. As you can see from this page, the first quarter saw shipments less as the prior year, while revenues and profitability grew double digits. As Benedetto mentioned earlier, the robust mix was the main driver. Let me briefly go through the main highlights. Revenues of 1 billion 585 million euro, up 11%. Adjusted EBIT of 442 million euro, up 15%, with a 27.9% margin, 100 basis points higher than last year. Net profit of 352 million euro, leading to an adjusted diluted earnings per share of 1 euro and 95 cents, up 20%. Adjusted EBITDA of 605 million euro, up roughly 13% with a solid margin at 38.2%. And finally, strong industrial free cash flow generation of 321 million euro. Moving to page six, we can now add more color to the shipment number of the first quarter. As usual, the geographic breakdown reflected our choices of both volume and product allocations in the different markets. As a result, deliveries increase in EMEA by 39 units, in Americas by 35 units, rest of APAC was almost flat, and allocations to mainland China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan decreased by 79 units. Moving to the product portfolio overview, during the first quarter, the Roma Spider continued its ramp up phase, while the Puro Sangue reached global distribution. Deliveries of the 296 family continued, sustaining the 46% hybrid share. The allocations of the Daytona SP3 increased in the quarter in line with our plans and above the average for the rest of the year. Lastly, some models were approaching the end of their life cycles, namely the SF90 Stradale and the A12 GTS. The SF90 XX Stradale, the SF90 XX Spider and obviously the newly launched Dodici Cylindri Coupe with the start contributing at their respective pace this year, while the 12 cylinder spy, Spider was 20, from 2025. On page seven, you can see the net revenues bridge, which shows a 13% growth versus prior year at constant currency. The increase in cars and spare parts was the most relevant contributor driven by the richer product mix and country mix, as well as higher personalizations. In the first quarter, personalizations came in strong and in line with our expectations of approximately 19% in proportion to revenue on cars and spare parts. The main contributors were the Puro Sangue and the total cardboard finish for the Daytona ST3. Sponsorship, commercial, and brand increased thanks to the higher sponsorships for our racing activities, partially offset by the lower Formula One ranking achieved in 2023 compared to 2022. With regard to sponsorship, the additional contribution is provided both from new sponsors and different phase-in of sponsors signed last year. Other revenues were flat, with the improved contribution of financial services offset by the decrease of the sales of engines to Maserati, whose supply contract expires at the end of 2023. As previously flagged, within the other revenues, we have now reclassified any residual sales of engines to third parties, whether for sport cars or racing. 
currency had a negative net impact of approximately 25 million euro, mainly due to the adverse dynamics of the Chinese yuan, Japanese yen, and US dollar versus the euro. Moving to page eight, the change in adjusted EBIT is explained by the following variances. Volume, slightly negative, mainly reflecting lower range models deliveries. Mix and price, positive for 123 million euro, thanks to the robust product mix sustained by Daytona SP3. As a reminder, we show in this bar the whole contribution from the Daytona pillar, including the volume variance. The increased contribution from personalization and a positive country mix, mainly driven by Americas. Industrial and R&D expenses grew 29 million euro, led by innovation expenses, mainly for our sports cars development, as well as higher depreciation and amortization. SGNA increased 12 million euro and mainly reflected the ongoing development of our digital infrastructure and organization. Other positively contributed for 6 million euro. The increased contribution for spon from sponsorship and the release of prior car environmental provisions in the USA, the latter worth approximately 10 million US dollars, were partially offset by the lower Formula One ranking achieved in 2023 compared to 2022. Lastly, the total net impact of currency was negative for 23 million euro. Turning to page nine, in the first quarter, our industrial free cash flow generation was strong and reached 321 million euro. It reflected the increase in profitability, partially offset by CAPEX for 195 million euro, 45 million euro higher than last year, and in line with the pace of development of our products and infrastructure. Capital expenditure during 2024 will develop more linearly compared to our usual cadence, particularly as we start spending for the new Spain shop. And second, a moderate increase in networking capital, mainly led by trade receivables. At the end of March, the company was in a net industrial cash position for 38 million euro, notwithstanding 136 million euro of share purchases occurred in the quarter and residual impacts from currency and IFRS 16. Following the annual general meeting approval in April, the dividend distribution of approximately 440 million euro was paid on the 3rd of May, thus impacting the balance sheet of the second quarter. Finally, let's move to page 10, which confirms the guidance for 2024. We are really pleased by the solid Q1 performance, the continuing strength of the order book, and the positive business trends, also emphasized by the enthusiastic reception of the Dodici Cilindri and the great partnership started with HP. On this basis, we do look with great confidence at the next steps in the execution of our plan for the current year and beyond. I thank you for your attention, and I now turn the call over to Nicoletta. Thank you, Antonio. We are now ready to open the Q&A session. Please, Sandra, go ahead. Thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, please press star 1 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. To withdraw your question, please press star 1 and 1 again. We will now take the first question. Coming from the line of George Galliers from Goldman Sachs, please go ahead. Good afternoon, and thank you for taking my questions. Um, the first question I wanted to ask was just to help um, provide some clarification about the order book. You talked about some normalization, but you also, in the opening marks, referenced the order book being very strong. Um, could you just help us understand what normalization means? Is this just the fact you have more slots available now going into 2026? and with the Duodici Cilindre, um, or is there another element to it? And could you just confirm you haven't seen any pickup or abnormal behavior with respect to cancellations? The second question I had was around innovation, 
And Benedetto, obviously you referenced the large number of patents that you continue to file. Um, just with respect to the patents and the innovation, is there any one area where you are particularly active today, such as aero or chassis dynamics, software or electric powertrain? Or is the innovation really across the board and all of the different technologies obviously in play at Ferrari? Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you for your question. I would start with the first one. Stabiliz uh, normalization, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so let me say in this way, it's a simple, uh, it's a simple math, okay? Because we are in a situation where a lot of our models are sold out, and we have uh, the uh, two new models that were uh, announced last week, and uh, thanks for the effort to pronounce well in Italian. Thank you. The Dodici Cilindri, well, this, uh, the order of these two cars are not yet in our portfolio. So normalization for us meant that, uh, as we said also at the beginning of the, the year, in February, we were expecting the product portfolio to go a little bit down because there was uh, not too much for the client to order. And this uh, question, I would like to take this opportunity to clarify something important. The order book that we have goes well into 2026. This is very important. I want to clarify this because we have uh, models that are, uh, let me say, for which we have a, a long, a long uh, waiting uh, list. The second point, no abnormality of cancellation. We saw less uh, order coming from China, that's true, but we don't see a, an abnormality of cancellation. We don't see any pattern either in terms of country or in terms of uh, models. We see some uh, uh, clients that want to have uh, some more model and they have to wait longer because there is a, a, a long wait, uh, uh, wait time, like uh, for example, the Buro Sangue. The other point was about the IP. The IP is uh, uh, the innovation, let me say, that we are running uh, and uh, we are patenting grow, goes across the board. There are some areas that are, uh, let me say, more, uh, uh, a little bit more present. What is related to the driving trails? So if you come, let me say, in our patent portfolio, we'll not find many patents about things that are not strategic for us, like autonomous driving. But uh, when it comes to uh anything related to the driving trails or and is interacting with the car well over there it, that one is an area of attention and focus for our patenting activity great thank you very much thank you we will now take the next question from the line of john murphy from bank of america please go ahead Hello, everybody. Um, I just had, had two two questions. Um, you know, the quarter was a very Ferrari-like quarter, um, you know, with volumes flat, very significant um, revenue growth from price uh, and mix and, and personalization. So it was really, you know, proved out the model. Um, but I think if we look at, at the two walks, I was just wondering if you could give us some information on or color on the EBIT change versus the revenue change. Because it was, you know, a very clean quarter with volumes almost almost flat year over year, but EBIT up 123 million versus revenue up 166 million, which would give you a 74% contribution margin, um, which I think is is not being appreciated necessarily in the stock, um, you know, at the moment. So I, I don't know if you can talk about that um, on a relative basis, but if you could give a sort of color of how we should think about contribution margin X volume because it was very strong in the quarter about 74 percent as far as i can tell the next question i would like to yeah, to there are three main elements that contribute to the to the increase in contribution margin um the first one is the is the product mix whereby it's important to flag the role of the icona actually uh, i think i said in my comments on the on the bridge that the Daytona contributed higher than they would do over the course of the rest of the year uh, in the first quarter. Secondly, personalization. Personalization is very strong. Um, 
So it's above the 19% that we had for the rest of the year, it's slightly above. The third is country mix. Obviously, with China down, um, that, that helps in, in terms of uh, even of the marginality. I don't know whether it, it is a sufficient color. Um, there are a couple of other elements that also contribute to 499P, also had a couple of, of models sold in the quarter, but that's what explains the strength of, of this contribution of mix and price. Okay, maybe just one, one follow-up to that. I mean, basically what you're saying is this 74% contribution margin X volume is the kind of number we should think about um, in the future. And then just one follow-up on Parasangwa. Uh, there is one element you should take into consideration. The Daytona is higher this quarter than the rest of the year. Okay, and then just on the Parasangwa uh, success, I mean, that, that form factor obviously is, is, is somewhat unique. Um, but Benedetto, you're having incredible success there. Uh, could we see a successor to that in, in the next couple of years? Um, and what would that mean for the business? Look, uh, also another interesting question. I can tell you that, yes, ProSangu is having a lot of traction and that the, the order book is very strong, <laughs> goes well ahead. But I don't want to comment. On, I cannot. I would like, but I cannot because secrecy is a, a way to fit the serability of what we do. Clearly, clearly, there is, uh, we are learning a lot from uh, this model, and usually, let's put it this way, we like to use what we learn, but I don't want to say if there will be a success or whatever. That's very helpful. Thank sorry you very much, this. guys. Sorry, sorry about this, George. No, understand, but thank you very much. That's good color. Thank you. Thank you. We will now take the next question from the land of time. Narayan from RBC Capital Market. Please go ahead. Oh, yeah. Thanks for taking the question. Uh, the first one I have is on China. You mentioned it was you know, down a little. Just curious maybe if there's something driving that. I know that there are some just inherent uh, reasons to not be as aggressive there with uh, CO2 restrictions there and uh, tariffs and such. Just We'd love to hear maybe a little more on, on what's happening in, in China, um, if there's anything, uh, any commentary there first. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. I would like to share with you some color about uh, uh, China. That is pretty interesting. So uh, we did some analysis. It's funny to see that uh, if you go in China and if you compare uh, uh, what was happening one year ago and this year, Basically, there are uh, two numbers that are swapped in terms of uh, uh, car that we ship to mainland China. Okay, we're talking about mainland China. Clearly, if I see versus one year ago, there is a stronger traction of hybrid model. One year ago, we were shipping more ICE than hybrid. This year, we are shipping more hybrid than, uh, uh, than ICE. And this brings also, uh, since, since the hybrid model are basically sold out, some, a little bit is uh, left to be sold. <laughs> so this is an impact and is also, let me say, gives you more color about uh, the, the meaning of normalization in, in, that kind, in, in that country. So I wanted to share a little bit more, co more color because uh, this uh, China has a different meaning for us versus the other brand, luxury brands acting in that region. It's a different meaning because for us, since the beginning, since the Capital Market Day, as Antonio said, clear, we want to keep mainland, uh, sorry, greater China, so ABC, mainland China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, below 10%. Because we want this market to get more acquainted with our brand, to be in the family of Ferrari, you need some time. And, to, and you needed to give time to the client in a country to understand what does it mean to be our client. So having said that, it's clear that, uh, let me say, in, uh, uh, in China, we had this kind of uh, normalization that was also our, uh, if you want, deliberate choice because the number of models we can sell there are not so many. <laughs> and uh, uh, we wanted to keep always below, below 10%. Thank you for that. And a uh, quick follow-up on personalization. Uh, the guidance is to stay at uh, that 19%. Um, <clears throat> that was the same amount in 2023, so effectively flat. 
Pure Sangue is coming in. I think you also said Daytona above that level. Um, so I guess the question would be, is there upside potential to that 19% to your guidance in 2024? Or maybe it's because, you know, the initial folks who are getting the Pure Sangue are more likely to personalize because they are maybe more VIP, et cetera. So just love to hear more on your thoughts on... No, I think, uh, let's say, the trend of... The trend of personalization is not specific of a model. What I can tell you, mm -hmm. let me say, another lesson learned. We like to register to report at least to us what are the lessons learned and to share with you is that, uh, you know, this, this year we increased the price of personalization. You may remember last call we said that we increased the price of the new model and we increased the price of personalization. Well, what we saw that, uh, yes, there was an increase on the price of the price of personalization, but there is not been any impact on the ratio of personalization. So this is a lesson learned. We increase the price of the personalization, but if the client wants to personalize, they keep personalizing. And this is also the reason why when the previous um, colleague asked the, the contribution year over year to the, uh, to the EBIT, Antonio was telling contribution from personalization product mix, a country mix. Also, if I may add, the, the higher the average uh, price of car, the lower the percentage. It's just a mathematical uh, formula. So the more no, we sell Daytona. Yeah. yeah. Understood. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. We will now take the next question from the line of Monica Posio from Intesa San Paolo. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me, and thanks for taking my questions. The first one is on the 12 cylindri. Um, I was wondering if uh, uh, the 12 cylindri might carry a higher ratio of personalization or if is there any particular features that might carry a higher personalization content uh, not only on the price side any colors <laughs> is appreciated on this side and my second question is on the country mix which was favorable, favorable in the first quarter should we expect a similar impact also in the coming quarters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monica. I think the first one, the second, uh, I leave it to Antonio. Uh, let's say two things for the Dodici Cilindri, okay? Coop and Spider. Actually, three things. One, as I said, that the client like love, sorry, love both of them. Two, I've been talking uh, maybe around the uh, 60, 70 clients spending time with them in the two evening we had in Miami. I saw a strong interest of the client for new colors. So Arctic white, as well as Verde Toscana. So there was a, a strong, uh, uh, many clients telling, I will take, I will order these colors. Uh, some mm -hmm. client asking for uh, two different colors on two different cars, <laughs> the Coupe and Spiders. <laughs> Uh, what I can tell you that the last important point is that uh, we agreed, uh, we, I mean, we increased the price. As you have seen, uh, the price is uh, 395k for euro for uh, um, the coupe and 435 for, uh, for the spiders. The number of the personalization, uh, let me say, what will, see, what will be the trend, we'll discover together. But I think there are enough personalization options for the uh, client, and uh, as I said, there is a lot of interest for the for the new colors that uh, uh, let's say that let them get in love even more. There are there, is, there is a lot of there are many dimensions we can explore over there, Monica. But uh, we wanted to start from uh, a price that is higher than uh, the, the, the the predecessor of this car. The second one I would like to uh, Antonio, if you can sure. elaborate. Um, Thank you, uh, as far as the, ciao Monica. Um, I think as far as the, as the country mix is concerned over the course of the year, I would expect uh, a modest positive impact. Mm -hmm. 
Um, sorry, so can you not repeat, uh, Antonio? So, sorry, the, the line is not working. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Welcome. God, thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you. We will now take the next question from the line of Adam Jonas from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Ciao, everybody. Uh, a couple questions. First, can you remind us of your uh, sales today by unit volume? What percentage of your volume are delivered to clients that already own a Ferrari, and how has that changed uh, in recent quarters? And I have a follow-up. We were waiting for uh, only this question. I have a follow-up. I can ask it now or wait. No, no, we were taking a note on a piece of paper, so maybe you can go. So one is the percentage of repeaters. The second? Um, yeah, so again, the first question to be clear is what percentage of your volume are delivered to clients that already own a Ferrari or were existing owners replacing a Ferrari, if that makes sense? Um, sure, and very the clear. Second, the, sec the second question, uh, Benedetta, is uh, you have been making efforts uh, downstream uh, with your your dealers and franchise dealers on trying to capture more of the recurring revenue and establish a more intimate relationship, if I can say so, with your clients, including things like in increasing uh, your um, your hit rate on uh, repurchasing a secondhand vehicle. Uh, I know there's other efforts that you're doing, but if you could give us an update on how that's going. Uh, since you kind of re-emphasized the efforts there, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Grazie. Allora, the first question is very, the first answer is very simple. Uh, uh, Adam, they say the repeaters, what we call the repeater, no? Uh, the people that are already client, uh, it depends a little, little bit on the model. So you have models where uh, the repeater uh, is uh, in the range of 10, uh, let's say 30, sorry, 30, 35%. To a situation where the repeater are going to around 80 percent, 85 percent. So it is a, in average, in average, in the year 2023, 74 percent, 74 percent of our new cars were sold to existing clients. Okay. Thank so you. So this is a, the answer. The second, the dealers. Uh, what we are doing together with the dealers is uh, to push more on. Uh, to, in, to make the relation more intimate, as you said, we are uh, working on two dimensions. Number one is the personalization. The personalization so that we can enrich, the, the, uh, we can personalize more the cars. And the second is uh, the uh, Ferrari approved. In, uh, in these days, I mean last week actually, we launched in USA the Ferrari approved program that is uh, something that uh, allows we want to link more and more the, we want to nurture more and more the pre-owned uh, market. And to this, we launched the Ferrari approved initiative that is uh, intended to, um, to link, to bring more in the family, the client, to avoid them going, let me say, to use gray works body shop or gray dealers. And for this, we agreed with our dealers some activities so that there is a, an incentive for our uh, uh, our client to go back and to stay in the in the family. So these are the two things we are doing. Uh, Adam, grazie. Prego. Thank you. <clears throat> we will now take the next question from the line of Michael Binetti from Evercore ISI. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks, guys. And Benedetto, first, I want to say congrats on the 98% of the employees participating in the stock program. I know that's something that's been important to you since uh, very early on in your time here. Thank um, you. I uh, just, I guess, a question on the margin cadence through the year as we think about the puts and takes, particularly in, in second quarter. Um, I think, you know, I think you said there'll be less Daytona after the first quarter, but I think here, here we are in May, I think the SF90XX models start to ship in the second quarter with the coupe and then the Spider later in the fourth quarter. 
Um, I know those are high price point cars, and it sounds like they're very heavily personalized. Is there, you know, does, as we look at that mixed bridge, does that slow because there's less Daytona through the rest of the year, and does the margin lift from Daytona slow through the year, or does the does the XX pick it up and 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 that can be more linear through the year? Um, and then I guess secondly, um, maybe just on some of the new items, how does how does the HP sponsorship flow into the PNL, which lines and, and what is the timing around when you start to record that, if, if that's a new addition to 2024 guidance. And then I guess my last one is um, Benedetto on the uh, on the e-building. I know that that's an, a, an important input to the EV that you've announced for next year. Is there, will we see that uh, the output from that building start to show up in your commercial activities but before the EV and, and maybe what would that would look like? So I think, uh, th thank you, Mike. I think the third one, and Antonio will elaborate on the, on the first two. So uh, the e-building, uh, as, uh, as I said, is, uh, um, it will be, the, let's say, the, 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 the electric cars will be done in the e-building, but in these buildings, because uh, we always uh, give a, a priority to flexibility, we, also, we will also have other cars assembled over there, the hybrid. So, yes, we will have... Uh, some hybrid cars that will get out, will be manufactured, assembled, let me say, in this e-building. But the, the, the electric cars, the plan for electric car stays as we committed two years ago, and the e-building will be inaugurated the 21st of June, as, as I said before. So don't expect, let me say, any electric cars to get delivered before what we told you. I mean, we stick to our plan. It's, yeah. uh, we are in line with that. For the other two, the HP sponsorship uh, uh, flowing in the PNL and uh, the margin cadence. Yeah, I go. Antonio. Hi, Mike. The, the first one, in terms of the um, the cadence, the, ca the cadence is partly the, the, current, the margin cadence is partly dictated by that of the deliveries of Zaytona, which we expect to be higher in the first half compared to the second. Even if in the second half, uh, at some point, uh, we'll get also the SF90XX uh, Stradale for delivery. Um, and the, but we expect anyway the overall um, mix and price impact uh, to, to remain above 10% compared to last year in terms of growth. And as far as the HP sponsorship uh, flowing into the PNL, it will start from the second quarter. Uh, do not disregard the fact that this is just a, a portion of the year, so it's not a full year sponsorship, this one. Uh, and as these things do not happen overnight, as you may imagine, we encompass that already um, largely in our guidance for the year, the beginning. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. We will now take the next question from the line of Stephen Reitman from Bernstein SG. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. I have some questions about the Pure Sangue and about the, uh, the 12 cylinder. Um, first of all, on the Pure Sangue, you say it has reached global distribution. So that means that it's also reached the production cadence that's equivalent to the 20% target you would normally have for the vehicle over the lifetime of the product. Um, secondly, on the 12 cylinder, could you comment, first of all, on your thought process and how you came about the pricing on this vehicle, obviously, which is a 30% uplift on the A12 Superfast, and I believe um, a 27% uplift on the A12 GTS. Obviously, big increases. Um, and, sec and secondly, also on the eight, on the uh, 12 cylinder, um, the fact that you're launching the two vehicles together, although as you mentioned, there is a delay before the uh, Spider comes out, is, is a release to customers. Does that indicate a high degree of flexibility you now have within your production system that you can actually develop these vehicles in tandem and have them out in a very short space of time compared mm -hmm. to in the past when there was a quite long gap between these kind of vehicles? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for your uh, question. So coming to the first one, the Puro Sangue, well, we can say that uh, in Q1, the deliveries of Puro Sangue were below 16% of the volume we shipped. So we are not yet at the 20%. Uh, you can assume uh, for the year that will be around 18% overall. The, coming back to the 12 cylinders or 12 cylindri, like we, we like, 
where the Dodici Cilindri, the price, uh, uh, let's say, we agreed to, put, to have an higher price, a substantially higher price than the previous version, because we believe there is a, a lot of innovation, a lot of uh, activities have been done by the company, by the old, all the team, to put together traditional innovation and uh, also, let me say, uh, the, when you try it, because we tried it several times with Antonio and all other colleagues on the track and on the road, there is uh, the right mix between uh, driving trips, elegance, and, uh, and uh, sportiness. So, let me say, I think this price is what uh, the cars uh, deserve to have, <laughs> also for, uh, for the, let's say, all the work has been done. I have to say that also during uh, the, uh, the two nights, let's say the world premieres, we have been talking about uh, the feature of the car. Okay, we're about uh, some client were telling, I, I do not believe you have been able to reach such high performances in a car that was already high performance. You now we're talking about four steering wheel that is really unique and brake by wires. A lot of innovation have been done on this car, meaning, meaning on the aerodynamic, on the power control, on the power, on the power unit. So also on the interior side, the display, the central display. Yes, one thing that the client appreciated a lot is that we listened. We heard the comment. We have a central display that is very high end, very easy to be to be used. Um, you said well. I mean, the reason why we launched the two models together, the Coupe and Spiders, is the first time that we launched this for our range cars. Is because. Uh, we want to give more freedom to client. It means that we are highly aware yeah. flexibility in house. So we prepared ourselves to have this higher flexibility in house because it's uh, uh, it's something that is also. Uh, I mean, we met several times. We have to to learn to know more our client, and this is a way also to learn from our client how they react when they see the two models together. We are ready because we have a flexible manufacturing uh, line. Thank you. If I go back to again about the pricing on the uh, Dodici Cylindri, uh, apologize, Italian. Um, if the price increase, like, does that give us any idea of the future direction of when you launch also replacements for the next series of vehicles? Will we be expecting this kind of degree of price uplift? on these vehicles. Obviously, with the 296 GTB, it was about a 14% increase. And I think on the Roma Spider versus the, uh, the Porto, Portofino M, it was about 16%. This is another interesting question. I think that uh, it's clear that uh, there are two things that we have to, uh, to balance. One is the, all the innovation that we are offering to our client. And number two, the willingness they have to pay an higher price. What I can tell is that uh, Yes, there is, a, as we said also in several meetings, there is an upward, a, a lift upward of, of our prices, as you have noticed well, for the 296, for the Roma Spiders, and for the Dodici Cilindri. I think this is important. Uh, I mean, we always said, you know, we want to grow, we want to give priority to value over, uh, over volume. If you see also the deliveries of this quarter, basically they've been flat versus one year ago. Very well, clear. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. We will now take the next question from the line of Anthony Dick from Odo BHF. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Just a follow-up question on the HP uh, title sponsorship. Um, so quite a significant uh, partnership uh, you, you've signed there. Um, so I was just wondering how that affects um, the profitability profile uh, of the F1 business. Is this something that could actually improve uh, the profitability of the business, or is it just made largely uh, to cover any cost increases that we might expect uh, in the coming years, and maybe especially in 2025, uh, with likely some, some higher wage expenses? Um, and then a second question on the paint shop. Uh, just wondering if you could update us um, on the development of the paint shop and what kind of investments and uh, ramp up uh, could we expect uh, for that new uh, building? Thank you. Okay, this, the, the first question, yes, it improves. 
very simple answer. <laughs> the second, the paint shop, uh, yes, we laid down the foundation in the last uh, quarter in Q1. And uh, let's say the total investment is in the, uh, is a part of the investment plan we declared to you uh, two years ago. You remember we said 4.4 billion euro. The total like 2022, 2026. Yes, over five years. Out of which, uh, let me say 1.1 billion was for infrastructure. And the paint shop as the building are part of this 1.1 billion euro over the five year cycle. So nothing, uh, nothing new, Anthony. It's, uh, we are moving according to the, the plan. The plan. The building will be announced uh, next month as per plan and the paint shop started in Q1 as per plan. And all is part of this uh, basket of uh, 1.1 billion euro. Thank you. Thank you. We will now take the next question from the line of Martino Ambrogi from Equita. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, sorry to bother you on the profitability in Q1 and customizations, but uh, uh, you mentioned that customization uh, was higher in Q1 than uh, uh, the 19% projected for the full year. Am I right in assuming 21% first? And second, you also mentioned the higher is the price, the lower is the customization. Ma Martino, can I just stop you on this one, just to avoid yeah. any misunderstanding? Uh, I, we guided the, the market to 19% for the full year, and I just said in Q1 we're slightly above 19. So that, that's it. That is not significantly different. Okay. 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 And uh, the, the second part, uh, always on this question, is. Uh, you mentioned that the higher is the price, the lower is the customization as a percentage of sales. Um, but you also mentioned but that the it's type... A simple, it's a simple math fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you also mentioned that uh, the Puro Sangue is ramping up and the Daytona had a higher contribution in uh, Q1 than uh, the rest of the year. I remember you mentioned in the previous call uh, Daytona was expected to deliver 60 units in this quarter, so maybe it was a higher. So, and the two things together... Um, show that probably it is not in this quarter uh, that the relationship, the higher is the price, is the customization for the overall picture. So I don't know if... Uh... Uh, that may be a high answer. You're right in the sense that the first quarter we had higher deliveries of the Daytona and the Puro Sangue is ramping up in our global distribution, but it's not yet at 20%. The, well, when we said at the beginning, we are guiding to 19% average, obviously take into account that we do not have full visibility of personalization over the, the rest of the year. Because the per decision on personalization is taken by the clients toward the end of its waiting time, a few months before delivery. So it's actually an assumption, the one. We are not in a position to, to project on a um, precise math for, for the following quarter, particularly as we go towards the end of the year. I think 19% on average is a fair assumption. Okay, thank you. And uh, the second question is on uh, costs. Uh, um, probably referring to the previous question on HP sponsorship, uh, am I right in assuming uh, uh, it is offsetting uh, the Hamilton uh, contract uh, uh, and just to have an idea of the Formula One uh, contribution going ahead uh, regardless of the ranking you will have this year, which is probably higher than, than last year. We said before, uh, Martino, it improves. This was the same question that we got, no? So. No, but the Hamilton contract uh, in the middle, I know you do not disclose the, uh, the precise figures and so on, but uh, I suppose this it helps to cover the Hamilton contract that uh, will come next year. No, no, but your answer, your question is very clear. And the, our answer, yes, uh, it improves. We okay. don't disclose okay. the daily A or B, the plus and the minus or uh, the, the, the equal, but uh, it improves. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Martino. Thank you. We will now take the next question from the line of Gianluca Bertuzzo from Intermonte team. Please go ahead. 
Hi, everybody, and thank you for taking my question. I'm sorry to, to bother you on the partnership with HP. Uh, are we talking about uh, triple-digit uh, sponsorship here, such as the uh, previous uh, long-standing uh, title uh, sponsor? And second and third question are about uh, um, volumes. Uh, can we expect a, an acceleration uh, of volumes deliveries uh, throughout the year, or uh, can we assume a stable evolution? And on cost inflation, what are uh, did you change expectation or uh, the, the the development is line with uh, with uh, with your thinking uh, at the beginning of uh, the year? Thank you. I think the first two and the cost is Antonio will uh, will help us to to go through. So HP, we never disclose the numbers, also because in the contract, if you see the contract we sign with all our sponsors. We cannot, we cannot, this information is confidential. So we cannot in any possible way the, the number, if it is one, two, three, four, five digits, whatever, whatever measurement unit you are thinking to. The second is the volume. We said uh, since ever that we value, the, the, uh, we give a priority to value Over versus volume. Uh, <laughs> volume. So uh, let me say, you know how many cars we did last year. We also said that the, 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 the growing volume will be very limited. You see that Q1, basically, we did, to be precise, seven units less than last year. So let's say we do not expect at all any acceleration of, uh, of volume. This is not, uh, I mean, what uh, a brand like us should do. And that's also the reason why, if you remember the previous question of uh, uh, Stephen, no? Stephen was saying uh, why you have been, uh, what is the, the rationale behind it is a strong price increase because we want to give always priority to value over volume. For the cost inflation, Antonio can... can well, guide. Yes, it's very simple. We haven't changed our assumptions for the rest of the year, actually. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Welcome. Grazie. Thank you. We will now take the next question from the line of Thomas Besson from Kepler Chevrolet. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to come back to uh, the seasonality of, uh, of earnings uh, and, and talk as well about the seasonality of CapEx and, and, and free cash flow, just to make sure I understood correctly. Uh, what I understood is that uh, earnings would uh, likely follow uh, the, the, the shape of uh, your deliveries for uh, the Icona. Uh, so you likely have a, a better first half than, than the second half. I just want to confirm that. Uh, and I think you said as well that CapEx would be more linear this year. Uh, than in previous years where it would have been more back-end loaded. Uh, is that correct? Um, maybe just clarify on the first one. I commented the development of the gross margin, the contribution margin, if you wish, which okay. is dictated by the, the cadence of the, of the Daytona. Um, when you look at the entire P&L, obviously there are other seasonalities that uh, cross over the, the top part of the, of the profit and loss. Mm -hmm. um, overall, uh, I would not expect uh, significant differences over time, but for probably Q3, that could be, but as it always normally happens, a bit lower. Um, with respect to CapEx, you're right. I said, usually we experience uh, an exponential growth of capital expenditure over the course of the year. In 2024, we expect the growth to be more linear because several projects are already well advanced. We are basically finishing up on the development of the e-building and we have the ramp up of the, um, of the expenditure on the new paint shop. Very clear, thank you. My second sure. question, I know you want to keep some, some surprise. I look forward to visiting it. Uh, this e-building, uh, when we come there, uh, are you already making something in it? Uh, are we going to see something, or is it just going to be uh, for us to present us your projects in more details when it comes to uh, uh, both uh, the uh, one to every component you're going to make there and cars, or are you already manufacturing something in the building? No, no, but we told you, maybe we were not clear in the past. In September, we start to get the first equipment. In December, we started already to assemble some uh, component for our, uh, for our cars. 
so uh, now we'll see how to manage it best the visit, but it's not an empty shell. We don't do this inauguration with empty shell, Thomas. We, I mean, there, is, there are people working over there. There are uh, components made already over there. I will have been prepared to come for a re religious uh, visit as well, uh, Benedetto. Uh, la la last question uh, on, on Forex, please. Uh, the, the headwind was a bit larger than I, I thought in, in Q1. Can you uh, give us an indication of what you, we should expect for the full year? Well, we have said we expect the, the dollar to stay in, in the area of 110. Mm -hmm. Um, then let, let's see what happens. It is rather unpredictable. For example, the, the impact of Chinese yuan and the Japanese yen, both last year and the current year, is negative and larger than we would have bet on. Uh, as you know, we edge our currency exposure on a 12-month rolling basis, so this smoothens a bit the, the, the impact, but overall I would expect this to be negative for the rest of the year. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. We will now take the next question from the line of Gabriele Gambarova from Banca Across. Please go ahead. Yes, thanks uh, for taking my questions. Just a couple left for me. Uh, is it possible to know the precise number of uh, SP3 Daytona delivered in, Q, uh, in Q1? Uh, yeah, uh, approximately 80. 80, wow. Yeah. And uh, another question, again, on uh, price and mix, uh, very strong uh, in Q1. Uh, the balance uh, uh, between this 80 and the 123, uh, am I right, assuming that is uh, made of, uh, uh, let's say, bigger uh, deliveries of uh, puro sangue? Okay. Can you, can you please repeat the, the question? Yes, we, I think. I, I, uh, just wondering, uh, was wondering if uh, the poor sangue had, uh, let's say, an important role uh, in the improvement of uh, price in mix uh, in Q1. Uh, putting okay, the, sorry. The okay, uh, we do not give the details of the overall product mix impact. Uh, I told you that overall the product mix impact is positive, and this is because of the Daytona. The other significant contributor remains personalization, and the third one is country mix. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you very much. And very last question, uh, just a check, uh, Antonio, you, if I understood well. Just for the sake of clarity, um, Puro Sangue, in terms of contribution, is average compared to the rest of the range, percentage-wise. Hmm? Uh, very, very last question. Um, I understood right. You said uh, you expect uh, price and mix uh, to give uh, a higher than 10% contribution uh, across uh, the, the rest of the year. Um, I said that the, the increase of price and mix, as you can measure it, as the ratio of uh, the average selling price compared to last year, is expected to be above 10% on the full year basis. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. We will now take the next question from the line of Henning Kosman from Barclays. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for squeezing me. And um, I have also one more clarification, I'm afraid. But um, I'm, I'm still trying to reconcile your comments with respect to high number of Daytonas. Um, I think very strong personalization mix on the first Pro Sanguis to be delivered, perhaps only a modest uh, geographical mix effect in the course of the year, perhaps a little bit less in Q1. So I would have thought these comments all sort of add to thinking that the Q1 margin is more towards the top end of the range that we can perhaps expect across the quarters for 2024. But then again, um, you know, similar to, to, the, to the previous point that the colleague made, if, um, if the revenue per unit stays at above 10% or price mix stays above 10%, I'm struggling to reconcile that, how that would be consistent with a full year margin of below 28%. I mean, perhaps you can help us one more time to, to reconcile that. And then on another topic that hasn't come up, a uh, second question is residual values. 
if I'm not mistaken, um, you had made comments around the degree of uh, residual uh, value normalization in the context of better availability of new cars. Um, I, I don't know if you wanted to share anything there. Um, I just wanted to give you an opportunity if you wanted to share something on residual values. Thank you very much. So I think the first one, maybe uh, Antonio can add some more color and I will comment about the, the second. Uh, so I start from a second also for business of discussion. <laughs> the residual uh, uh, value, there are, uh, uh, let me say, uh, the, the residual value keep, uh, keep pretty well. There, is, uh, there has been uh, one uh, country that has been uh, suffering a little bit for, a specific, for one specific model, but uh, the situation is, uh, is, is coming basically to, is recovering. So we don't see any, any strange pattern over there. Uh, coming to the first question, uh, Antonio yeah. will elaborate more, but what I would like to underline is that we are not changing the guidance. Absolutely, so, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we are asked about color for the development uh, uh, of product of price and mix over the rest of the year. And I try and simplify what I said before, meaning price and mix has been particularly strong in Q1. This has been supported by the number of deliveries of the Daytona, which is higher compared to the average for the rest of the year. And it, the, the other element that contributed positively was personalizations. And obviously, as I said, the, the other information that I put is that we expect on average price and mix to be growing 10% or above that in the course of 2024 compared to last year. This means that over the course of the quarter, in terms of contribution margin, depending on the cadence, the actual cadence of the Daytona will probably be slightly lower compared to the first part of the, of the first quarter of the year. This is it. Does it help? Um, I might follow up with the team afterwards, but thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to turn the conference back to Benedetto Vigna for closing remarks. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks also for your, all, uh, all your questions. The strong Q1 result and also the strong brand desirability are fueling our confidence for the development of the year and also forward. This is the key message that we wanted to, to pass to you. And I wish you a good afternoon and to, thank you again for your attention. Grazie. This concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.